To add new bookings, our application needs to be able to write data into the database at the back end. Let's remind ourselves what this involves. We have a customers table, tuple customers, a seats table with lots of rows, one for each seat, and a bookings table, tuple bookings. For good measure, I'll manually input a new customer first, Edsger Dijkstra. Of course, later, I'll need to be able to do this from the vb.net application. Now we'll add some seat bookings for Dijkstra. Let's say seats 21 and 22. That's interesting. I haven't actually written the record to the customer table yet because I haven't moved off it. That does the trick. In this simple system, I need to add one row to this table for each seat booked. I'm going to start by showing you how to write code to add bookings for an existing customer only. I'm also going to proceed on the assumption that the person entering the new bookings already knows the customer's ID. In reality, we'll probably want to enter details of a new customer at the time of booking some seats, and it's highly unlikely that we're going to remember any particular customer's ID. We can deal with these issues later, but by proceeding as I've suggested, we can focus on the commands and the techniques needed to write information to the database. First, I'm going to place a text box and a button on the form. I like to name my controls as I go along. OK, and let's write the code for the continue button. The first part of this routine will do some validation, just to check that some seats have actually been selected. I'm going to base this on some code I've already written. Okay, so nothing terribly new here. I'm just scanning through the controls, and if I don't find any which have been selected, then this Boolean variable will be left set to false. And I'll remind the user, and we'll stop the program. Assuming something has been selected then, I can set about inserting the selection into the database. Now, to make sure I get my SQL right, I'm going to write a booking to the database first for just one seat, and I'm going to hard code the data as well. Bear with me. SQL isn't case sensitive, but I like to put keywords in capital letters so they stand out. I think it makes it easier to read. I'm actually going to test this insert statement in Access first, just to make sure I've got the syntax right. I'll copy it into the SQL view of an Access query. Notice my current bookings first of all for seats 21 and 22. Create a query. SQL view. Run it. That looks promising. Don't need to save this. Yep, there we go. I'm booking for seat 24. That's fine. I'm going to clean some of these out now. So we haven't got any bookings for Dijkstra at the moment. Now let's see if we can do this programmatically. Oh, by the way, Notice I didn't worry about the booking ID in my insert statement. That's an auto number field in Access, so I can leave it and just let Access take care of it. Right, I need to connect to the database, so I'm going to establish a connection. I've already got some code to do this. Let's just copy it. I also want a command object 
to fire my insert statement at the database. Well, I've got some code for that as well, which I can just adapt. I think I'll change the name of the command just to make it a bit more appropriate. And of course, this is the SQL I'm going to use with the command. So let's just change that too. There's one more line of code I need, and that's to fire the command at the database. Execute non-query. Okay, let's see if this works then. Actually, I'm a little bit worried about that error there. It's telling me basically I don't have a connection string. There's something I've left behind. I need these two lines as well. That's better. Let's see if we can enter a seat booking for seat 24 for Edsger Dijkstra. Now, I don't actually need to enter anything because I've hard coded all of the data, so I can just hit continue. But of course, my validation kicks in. So I'm going to select a seat, although this seat is irrelevant. OK, so hopefully seat 24 has been written into the database. Let's see. Yeah, that's worked nicely. Notice how these auto numbers are not sequential. That's because I've deleted some records. It picks up from the highest auto number that I've deleted. If that bothers you, you can go to database tools and compact the database. And then these numbers will be sequential again. To be honest, I'm not that bothered. Now. I really need to do this for each seat on the form that has been selected. So the idea is to examine each control on the form in turn, looking for those with the green provisionally booked icon. And if I find one that's been selected, I'll determine the seat ID and then adjust the SQL statement for that particular seat. And then I'll fire it at the database. Then I'll look for the next selected seat adjust the SQL again and execute it. And I'll keep doing this until I've checked all the seats. OK, so to do this, I'm going to borrow a loop to cycle through the controls again. This will do. And the reason I'm doing this is to pick up the seat IDs. So I'm going to have an integer variable to hold the seat ID. And now I'm going to use the mid function to extract the number part of a seat ID. So if a seat has been provisionally selected, the idea here is that the mid function allows me to specify a string, in this case, the name of the picture box. Then the second parameter is a starting position, the start of a substring, which I want to extract, that is. And then if I wanted to, I could include a third parameter, which is the length of the substring, which I want to extract. But without that third parameter, it'll just pick up everything from position 11 in the string. The reason I've done this is because all of my picture box names start with the words picture box, followed by the seat number. And we have 10 characters here. I'm just going to output that just as a check to make sure it's getting the seat numbers. And I don't want to accidentally add any data to the database. So I'll just comment out that line. There we go. Four sequential seat numbers. But nothing's been written yet. Now I'm going to copy my SQL statement and adjust it each time I pass through this loop. I'm going to take this string apart. This is a little bit fiddly. You have to be careful when you're doing this. But the basic idea is don't leave any unterminated strings. So I want to replace Edgar Dijkstra's code here with the one on the form. So I'm going to put a double quote there to close off the string to the left of this customer ID and a double quote on the right. So on the right and the left of this, everything is syntactically correct. 
and then I'm going to concatenate something in here in its place, namely the customer ID from the form. Now if I'd done that wrong, I'd have a syntax error, but that looks okay. I also want to put the seat ID in here. So again, directly on either side of that, a double quote. I place an ampersand on either side of it now. That is syntactically correct, but I want to replace this with my variable seat num. So each time we pass through this loop, my insert statement is changing. Once it's changed, I'll assign it to the command object's command text property. So I'm just going to move that line of code here. And then I'm going to execute it. So I need this line of code inside the loop as well. So what we're doing is we're building an SQL insert statement each time we pass through that loop for the seat that we're looking at. And then we fire it at the database. Let's give that a go. I've just realized as well, actually, I've got an ad handler here, which I don't need. I'll just get rid of that. That's left over from the code I borrowed. don't think it's doing any harm, but let's not waste any time doing something we've already done once. Let's go. So, Edgar Dijkstra is booking these seats. Well, that should have worked. One way to find out is to check the database. I'll need to close and reopen this table. And there we go, new bookings. If I close and reopen this form, I would expect the load event to pick up the new bookings, and it does indeed. Now it occurs to me that there's some code in the form's load event handler which is responsible for displaying existing bookings when the form loads. That code could be placed into a separate procedure and called whenever bookings are made. Now I only need this section here. Okay, so there's update bookings. I don't need that in here. But I do want to set up the picture box event handlers, so I'll leave that little loop at the top there. Call update bookings from the form's load event handler. And call it after I've written the booking to the database. A good idea to close the connection as well. Let's do that. In fact, I can close the connection I used here. Because my update bookings procedure will open it again. And I think that's fine. Let's give that a go. Edgar Dijkstra's back. He's got a big family, you see. Lovely. Let's try someone else just to be sure. Charles Babbage. And that's working nicely. So we're writing bookings into the database, albeit only for existing customers whose IDs we happen to know. But next time, I'll take a look at selecting an existing customer in a more user-friendly way. And of course, adding new customers to the database at the time of booking.